I'd like to share with you some of the processes I've used to create the works in Flux and Flow. First I start with a wax model. I hand build these wax model using a delicate control between pouring wax, melting it away and shaping it with all manner of tools using heat, steel rules, carving knives, scalpels, basically anything I can get my hands on. I often solder the work together. Here I am soldering a feeder onto the base of an arc piece. I make a refractory mould around the wax model. I need to hold the work up to get the plaster and the silica mix all the way around each work. There's no way I can have these down on the bench and do this. So the large works do get very heavy and sometimes I'll even employ the help of my assistant to do this. Once the first layer is created, then we build up the next layers and subsequent until we have a mould as thick as required for the glass weight to pour into. I'm trying to aim for an even wall thickness all over the whole mould. This just does get difficult with the skinny fluid areas and the thick areas. I'm thinking about how the glass is going to flow into the mould and the protection it's going to need from the, from the mould thickness as the glass is heating up and then cooling very slowly over a long period of time. I level off the top of the mould to ensure that I can turn it upside down and place it safely inside the kiln. The wax is steamed out from the mould leaving the negative space for the glass to pour into. Loading the kiln can be quite tricky with these heavy moulds but with the use of a trolley it does make things a lot easier. The glass has been calculated long before the mould is made. I need the work in front of me to be thinking about where I want each glass piece. The glass goes inside a terracotta pot which is placed above the mould inside the kiln. As you can see it's pretty tight. This work was in the kiln for four weeks due to the thickness of the glass. The glass is revealed from the mould as I take away the layers that I built up. It's a delicate process to get all the plaster off to a point where I can then water blast around the fluid areas. This may seem pretty gung-ho and pretty full-on to be delicate water blasting this delicate glass but my theory is if it can't handle the water blaster then it's not going to last. The glass is actually surprisingly strong. There are many, many hours grinding the glass to get the final curves and the lines that I want in the finished product. This is a really enjoyable part of the process as I get to connect with the finished artwork. I take the polishing stage through nine different grades of diamond pads from very coarse 
right through to micro finishing fine pads. I clamp the work to a jig that I've set up which enables me to get the grinder to access all areas. It's not till I get right down to the last stages that I can really see the internal movement of the glass flow that I've created. This is hand lapping. I'm using silica carbide grit and a sheet of float glass to grind the lead crystal piece on top of. This is going to give me a nice straight edge for my vertical edge on inhale, exhale. To create the final polish, I use another grinder, which is not a wet grinder. I use a felt pad and cerium paste to polish this. It can take a good couple of hours to finish a work like this one, a ballos. I hope this video gives you a small understanding of what goes into making a piece of cast glass artwork from my fluid series. If you'd like to know more, contact me via the links. I hope to hear from you.